Hey Team Titleist, Ben Wiesberger here uh, from my home in Austria. I uh, hope you're all doing well in these times. Uh, thanks for sending in so many questions and I'm looking forward to answering them. We will start off with a question from Lucas. Uh, he wants to know which is my favorite golf course in Austria. Um, got actually quite a lot of really good golf courses here in Austria. Unfortunately, we got a shorter season with um, you know some, some uh, stronger winters, but uh, the favorite if I had to pick one, would be a golf court it's, um, near Graz. It's called uh, Murhof. A lovely, you know, uh, tree-lined golf course. Love it to play in the spring when all the, you know, all the apple trees are in bloom. And um, yeah, probably one of my favorites to play uh, in Austria here. Right, Callum put him a question uh, about how I'm practicing during lockdown. Uh, unfortunately, the Austrian government actually locked down all sports facilities um, nonstop. Uh, last week early last week so i've been uh i haven't been on a golf course for like uh yeah actually since uh, first day of the players but uh fortunately enough um i moved into a new house and i've put myself up with a nice little indoor golf room which is running now as well got a little track man running uh, on the other side i got a little bit of a of a gym there and um you know a, a bike to stay active uh, yeah, it's really hard not to be outdoors uh, even if because the weather's pretty nice the last couple of days as well. Uh, but you know, uh, we all gotta do what we gotta do and uh, trying to uh, make the best out of it. So fortunately enough, I've got like a little swing studio here where I can work a little bit on my game um, while the golf courses are shut down here. Maxu and Miki uh, want to know my favorite golfing moment. Um, I had a few really nice golfing moments in my career so far. Uh, but one probably tops all of them, which was uh, me winning uh, my home championship in Austria in 2012. Um, was my uh, my second win on European tour. Uh, early that year, I won in, in Korea as well. So they came pretty close to each other. It was very emotional for me with family there. Um, what topped it up as well was my grandfather passed not too long before that. So it was very emotional. Um, obviously, winning at home is always nice, but that was, um, you know, very special and uh, I enjoy you know thinking back to that moment uh, every now and then. Right so James wants to know uh, which my favorite club in the bag is right now. Um, I've got my golf clubs set up here at the uh, swing studio and I've got to say um, I got a couple new wedges in uh, uh, in Florida the other week. Uh, the new Titleist SM8 and um, Aaron Dill, who's uh, doing uh, a lot of crazy stuff for us with the stamping, he, he put my, my logo on my new wedges and just the sheer beauty of them uh, makes them my new favorite club, I think. So thanks, Aaron. Josh is going to start a little bit of a theme now with the next few questions um, regarding my Scotty Cameron collection. He's asking how many I have. Um, I've been partying with Scotty Cameron basically since my late uh, amateur days, and you can see I have quite a few. Uh, I'm quite proud of these actually. These are all the major head covers, unused, uh, and on nice shelf sets. Really nice. Um, these are most of them, but not all of them. My gamers in the golf bag over there, and I've got a few more in my garage. Um, I would say right around 50 probably, guys. Yeah, um, it's crazy, um, but I love them. What a craftsmanship, uh, and also what a great performance. So I've used most of them in tournaments, um, you know, some I have actually acquired uh, and just left there as a collector, but um, yeah, I love them. Staying with the Scotty Cameron theme, uh, Tom wants to know if there's anything missing in the collection. Um, yeah, there's always something missing, but uh, I've got a few really nice uh, GSS models up here, which, uh, which are pretty unique and pretty lovely with my initials on them. Uh, I've got... Uh, a couple older ones, I really enjoy this one, like an old napper putter. I love that one. Um, there's a few of the, you know, of the older models that I, uh, I would like to find at some point. Um, obviously for me playing a, a mallet, I, um, I, you know, appreciate the, um, the new technologies and how it helps us roll the ball better. Um, but I really love the look of, of an old blade and the old uh, designs as well. So uh, I always keep my, eyes open and see if I can find some new uh, new beauties for the wall. Okay, Henry wants to know uh, about my wedges, um, the loft in them. Um, a couple of years back I was playing with four wedges. I've 
then switch back to three, I've got a 59, a 53, and a 46 pitching wedge, all customed up by the boys at um, Voki, Aaron, and the guys in Europe, hooking us up with great stuff. And that's been the setup I've been playing for, you know, a lot of years now, worked out well. Nice question here, which was personally a more satisfying year, 2012 or 2019. 2012 was the first year where, uh, the year where I first won uh, on European tour and obviously 2019. Uh, last year was a great year for me, winning three times. Uh, tough to pick. Um, obviously, last year was very emotional, winning uh, three times uh, on tour after a year off with injury. But I probably will have to go still with 2012 when I, f when I first won out on tour. Um, two times actually in a short span. Um, I think it was the first year I actually qualified for uh, the year-end uh, race to Dubai as well. So that was a cool year and um, great memories from then. And uh, yeah, I'd have to go with 2012 on this one, I think. Okay, Steve wants to know uh, if I've got any superstitions um, before a round of golf. Um, not really, it's kind of more routines. Um, you know, when I start my practice and uh, before a round of golf, and it's all kind of ingrained now over the years. But the only superstition I have is that I put my ball marker always in my left pocket and all the other stuff, um, pitching tool, uh, pencil, tees, uh, I put into my right pocket. So uh, I've done that for many years. I don't know when I started, I don't know why I started, but it uh, it still is uh, the same way and I don't think it's ever going to change. All right, I would uh, love to have uh, that problem. Troy wants to know uh, if I would prefer having a downhill left to right or right to left part to win the Open Championship. And my answer would have to be, I'd take any putt, doesn't matter from where it is, to have a chance to win the Open Championship. But if uh, you would hold a gun to my head, I would probably actually go for a right to left. Right, James wants to know if, uh, if I could be at the top of any other sport, uh, what it would be, which sport it would be. And um, it would definitely be as an Austrian, and I've grown up uh, skiing a lot, it would definitely be... Uh, a downhill skier. Um, I had the chance to watch those guys uh, ski down the mountain in Kitzbühel at the Hanenkamp races a couple of times and it's unbelievable. Uh, it's such an adrenaline rush. Uh, it must be so cool and that would be the one thing I would love to do if I wasn't a professional golfer. So downhill skier would be uh, my choice. Okay, next question comes from Noah and he wants to know how many hole-in-ones I've had. Um, not a crazy amount, but I think it's like five or six. I, it's a good thing I can't really remember, I guess. Uh, been a few, but uh, yeah, I think I've, I've had six hole-in-ones so far, but only two of them came in tournament, unfortunately. So one I uh, had in a Challenge Tour event in uh, Madeira uh, a long time ago, and the other one came at the Spanish Open in uh, PJ Catalonia on 11. So this was the two ones I got uh, on, at a tournament. Uh, and only then the one in Spain, I really got a price for it. I got a, I think I got like 200 cans of beer for it. So that was nice. All right, Jordan wants to know um, what I do if I get nervous or how I control my nerves. Um, well, first of all, I enjoy being nervous. It means that I care and, and uh, I look forward to uh, what's happening out on the golf course. You know, after I think that first tee shot is out there, um, they start to settle rather quickly, but um, you know, I think we all out here on, on, on tour, all the professionals still get nervous every now and then. Good thing, um, embrace it, enjoy it. And, you know, maybe get yourself into um, high pressure situations and practice a little bit, um, you know, where really try to make it maybe um, finish a drill or finish a, a task and you get a little bit nervous as well, even though it's only practice. And um, that helps to uh, settle in quicker as well with your nerves um, when you've got a scorecard in hand. So you wants to know what has been the best piece of, of advice from someone about life on tour. Um, I, guess, I mean, guys, you know, we are very fortunate to do what we do. Um, it's a lovely job, best job in the world. Um, it's actually not a job because, uh, you know, uh, it's a hobby turned into my profession in a way. So um, I think the best thing you can do is just enjoy it, enjoy the ride, enjoy being out there, be competitive. 
Uh, and um, yeah, I think that was the best piece of advice was given to me early in the the challenge two years uh, when we were traveling, you know, South America on, on challenge tour and uh, uh, it was good times uh, and still enjoy it. Obviously, sometimes a little bit uh, frustrating out of the golf course, but that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy uh, the ride and, and the possibility to play professional golf. Harry uh, sent a question in and he wants to know the hardest part of being a professional golfer that people often don't realize. And um, for me, that's uh, quite simple, actually answered. I really hate waiting, hate waiting around, hate uh, losing time and obviously uh, traveling and being at the airports and trying to get con connections and uh, you know, being there before your um, plane departs uh, is probably the one thing I could uh, get rid of the easiest. Um, but apart from that, I really love what I do. Uh, it's great, uh, great and the best job that you could have in the world. So not much else, but you know, I could do with uh, shortening those weights at the airports for sure. Okay, Henry, I don't know why you want to know what's in my fridge, but here you go. Um, in the freezer, a bit of frozen fish, yeah, a bit of ice cream, I'm not gonna lie, a couple of frozen uh, um, vegetables, and on the other side, I actually need to go shopping today, so I'm not too stocked. A couple of eggs, pretty basic, butter, I'm running out of this, a lot of cheese here, I love cheese in the evening, a uh, bit of fruit, a um, bit of meat down there, and veggies down in the bottom, so actually, it looks pretty stacked, but I need to get shopping later on. All right, guys, uh, thanks for sending in your questions. Thanks for Titleist uh, to check in for a quick Q&A. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you stay at home. Uh, let's get through this. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hope to see you out in the golf courses very soon and take care. Bye-bye.